even with all of that experience, that day-to-day -day experience responding to the unexpected and unplanned, very likely when you get word of yet another change or a new disruption, your first response feels something like this person's. We can't help it, really. We're literally wired at the level of what some call the reptilian brain to constantly assess the environment for threat and avoid it at all costs. And in fact, that reptilian brain has a hard time telling the difference between a sudden organizational change and being chased by a pterodactyl. In fact, I have a story that a client shared with me very recently that perfectly illustrates this. They, they were gathering for a big quarterly meeting there were rumors some changes were going to be announced. You can imagine there was already some tension in the room. And when those changes did, in fact, get announced, the hands immediately started going up. You've seen this happen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is too much, too fast. Wait, wait a minute. How do you possibly expect us to meet our quarterly goals this, this year with all these changes? But that's not why the client called. Something surprising happened. So that leads us to our opportunity, not only this morning, but over the next couple of days, working together to create enough stability to sustain performance with enough flexibility to respond to challenges and opportunities effectively. So you ready to take on this opportunity? Yeah. All right, we're going to do three things together then. This morning, we're going to raise our awareness, figure out what we're even talking about when we talk about agility, why it's such an important priority for you, both in your home roles and in the association. I'm going to talk a little bit about the need to continually assess and adapt your capacity to be agile. And I promise I won't delay sharing a number of examples of agility in action. Another way for us to think about this is that agile organizations are fit organizations. How many of you here currently or at some point in your life have owned a gym membership? All right, excellent. And, and how many of you know the difference between owning that gym membership <laughs> and the day in and day out practice it takes to actually get yourself there, maintain that routine? It's the same for us in our organizations. I'm not talking about a one-shot initiative or one topic. I'm talking about the day in and day out practices to be sure we're at the top of our game, that we're responding consistently. So we'll look at what some of those practices are in just a moment. And this is important because we've actually all had a wake-up call from what I sometimes call the mythical then when we could characterize our day-to-day -day reality by its Stability, predictability, clarity, routine. Any of you remember those days? <laughs> we, of course, but we, in our minds, we sometimes think, wasn't there a time when it wasn't so crazy? Of course, they never really existed, but we think it wasn't, it wasn't always this crazy, was it? But in this mythical reality, we could actually function fairly effectively on the key competencies of planning and analysis because these are the things we can control. And this works great as long as everything's completely going as planned, but we know that's not today's reality. So we have to balance these competencies with this new reality to this new reality we've woken, woken up to, which is characterized by continuous change and continuous learning, often unplanned. And it's characterized by the acronym VUCA. How many of you are familiar with this term? Have you come across it in any of your, your work? It, uh, it stands actually for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And it was first coined by the US Army War College to describe the changing conditions on the battlefield. But in fact, we now regularly are using it across sectors to describe our day-to-day -day reality. And in, it, in the midst of this reality, we have to also develop some new comp. And this will be a perfect chance to practice. So you can see this is just up for fun, but it's a chance to practice making this mindset shift. I'm going to ask you to stand up where you are, just groups of three. We'll only play this for about 60 seconds. First person in your circle, shout out something wildly fortunate, and then the next person come up with something unfortunate and keep turning it around. Did you notice 
any difference between the fortunately and unfortunately?